A PCB rework and solder training company called Best Incorporated sent me some interesting SMT stencils to review. They've got ones for QFPs, leadless chips, and also some that help with BGAs, both in reballing and placing them back on a board. The main innovation that stands out to me is an adhesive back that turns these into a kind of sticker. I'll start off describing their stick and peel product for QFPs. Now one common problem I have with capped on stencils like this is that paste can get under the stencil when you're squeegeeing. This leads to shorts and stray solder balls after reflowing. But with a sticker, the adhesive holds down every part of the stencil, so it's less likely for solder paste to get under the stencil. The manufacturer also points out that this is an advantage over metal stencils on warp boards that might not be completely flat. You first place the stencil over the pads, which stays somewhat adjustable before you press down on it. Then squeegee over the solder paste a few times. Again, because it's a sticker, there's less risk of getting solder underneath if you don't get enough paste on a first pass and need to re-swipe a few times. Another advantage of the sticker is that you can potentially place it directly over nearby components, where you might otherwise have to remove them to fit in a mini metal stencil or tape down a regular Kapton stencil. The documentation says they're for one-time use, which could add up fast to $80 for a 10-pack, but on the other hand, you don't need to spend time cleaning a stencil. They're definitely targeting businesses that place a premium on time. I should mention that the $80 is for a custom cut stencil, so hopefully in the future they'll offer some standard packages at a lower rate. For leadless chips, they offer a very similar product called a stencil mate. With this, you apply the sticker to the underside of the chip, squeegee solder paste, and then reflow the part to add bumps to its pads. For leadless chips, I typically just drag a ball of solder over the pads to create bumps, but it's difficult to get the right amount, especially on the center pad. Once you have the bumps on the chip, you can simply place it on a flux board and reflow. They also offer an optional sister stencil that can be used to help locate the chip on the board. After placing the sister stencil, you apply paste and then fit the bump chip into the holes. In my experience, surface tension will pull the chip into place once the solder liquefies, but this doesn't always work perfectly. Again, the main advantage here seems to be time savings during rework. These come in a 10-pack of custom-designed stencils for $95. For BGAs, they have a reballing preform and a placement guide. The reballing preform is a thicker piece of plastic that has balls glued inside called Easy Reball. To reball a BGA, first clean off any existing solder balls with an iron, wick, and then alcohol. Then apply a thin layer of paste flux. Place the chip on top of the preform and run through a heating profile. I had some difficulty getting this to work with my not so fancy toaster oven setup. If there's too much difference in temperature from one side of the chip to the other, the chip can tilt, resulting in some balls not sticking. After placing the chip in the center of my oven, I had more luck. Here you can see a mostly successful result, but there are still two misshapen balls in one of the corners. The manufacturer says they get over 90% success with a proper reflow profile. The Easy Reball product is $105 for 15 custom-made preforms. For hobbyists looking for a cheaper option, you can also buy the balls separately and use a stencil to place them, but this process definitely takes longer and the stencils can deform after repeated heating. To reattach a BGA, they offer another sticker type stencil that's a little thicker called Stencil Quick. You first apply the stencil sticker to a clean board, then tape around the edges, apply solder paste, and then place the BGA with balls into the holes and reflow. The stencil becomes a permanent part of the board. They recommend using solder paste instead of just flux in the holes, which probably helps accommodate any warping in the board or parts. One neat thing about the sticker approach is that it can cover a missing solder mask, preventing the balls from wicking away from the pads. It also works down to 0.15 mm pitch micro BGAs, potentially enabling alignment without a split vision system. Stencil Quick costs $74 for a custom pack of 10. Overall, these stencils and preforms may not be the cheapest option for hobbyists, but they could definitely save lots of time and failed attempts in time-critical environments.